Alrighty, welcome everyone to the very first session of Star Trek Adventures Akagi. Uh, for those of you that are tuning in for the first uh, tuning in for the first time, welcome. We are playing the Star Trek Adventures role-playing game by Modifius. If you don't know what a role-playing game is, it's pretty simple. I, as the GM, set the scene, run both the universe and the NPCs, and act as judge of the rules. My players then act as their characters, occasionally rolling dice to determine how successful they are at certain actions. For Star Trek Adventures, you want to see lower numbers. Ones are critical success, and twenties are a critical failure. And there's quite literally a lot more that could be said about this, but you'll get a better idea once we start play. Uh, real quick, I do have to push one button that I forgot to. There we go. Uh, before we begin, uh, I'd like to also give a few shout outs if that's all right. Uh, the first is I'd like to give a shout out to Jester David for compiling the intro you saw moments ago. Uh, he's done a phenomenal job uh, doing the intros for all three of my games, and I just want to give him some additional thanks. Uh, second, of course, we have to thank Modifius for coming up with such a fun system. And then last, I would like to give a shout out to one of the players of this game, Mr. Walter, also known as the Legend Thok, also known as Beckett, Drake, and now Zines, for coming up with the initial idea for this campaign. So, uh, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. And like with some episodes of Star Trek, we're going to be beginning with a Captain's Log. So, Captain Miller, if you would be so kind. Yes. Captain's Log. Stardate 39125.6. Captain Jeffrey Miller, Commanding Officer USS Lex... Correction. Commanding Officer USS Akagi. Uh, Akagi is currently en route to the Asha system in the Beta Quadrant with a group of colonists from Starbase G6. I must confess a high degree of enthusiasm for this mission since my home colony of Camus 3 is very close to our destination. And the temerity of settling on a frontier planet and the determination to build a new life is frankly very inspiring. Plus, there is nothing more demonstrative of the values of the Federation than the facing of the unknown. And I can think of really no better mission for this ship's maiden voyage than delivering these brave people to their new home. And so far, the journey has been without incident. Even though Akagi was originally designed as a battleship, it seems that the refit to convert her to a support carrier, carrier has been a resounding success. And the uneventfulness of our journey thus far is much more a testament to the skill and efficiency of the crew than her captain. Alrighty. So, uh, as the captain has indicated, uh, at least to me, uh, he is starting off with a round of the ship. So first off, we're just going to sort of cut to a random corridor of the ship, and the captain is walking along. So uh, if you would be so kind, please tell us a little bit about your captain, uh, both a physical description and then anything else you think that uh, either as players or as viewers or even me as the GM think that uh, we should know. Sure. So we're playing Captain Jeffrey Miller. Uh, he's a middle-aged human late 40s perhaps early 50s he's a little under two meters so a little tall he's kind of on the lanky side although he's picked up some pounds as he's gotten older uh, he's been in starfleet for quite a while actually he just came off of a rotation serving on the uss lexington for about 12 years so he's been on that ship he actually just left that ship it was as it was decommissioned so this is his first chance on sort of a new and shiny vessel the old lexington was was quite old uh, he's got darkish hair with uh some white around the temples and he's got a white, mostly mostly full beard and, and, and blue eyes. Uh, he's kind of got those smile lines around his eyes because he very frequently just kind of casually walks around. And he has just, you know, a typically uh, very confident, very happy demeanor about him. As, as he approaches crewmen in the hallways, you know, he's not very standoffish. He'll often introduce himself, you know, say hello, Jeff Miller, shake their hands and welcome them to the ship. And unlike the player, Miller, the character, will remember all of these people's names and all the crewmen's names and just some snippets about them. But yeah, he's just kind of been walking around, taking a tour of the ship, introducing himself, and just seeing what people are up to. Okay. And, you know, as indicated, as you're walking the corridors, you see crewmen at work uh, doing various things uh, as you pass by. And, you know, a few of them stop what they're doing and give you a, a sharp salute as you pass by. And uh, otherwise, you know, your uh, journey is pretty pleasant. Uh, so far, you're not seeing, obviously, any fires that need to, uh, need to be put out. Uh, you're also pretty much seeing that even without prompting, your crew appears to be doing their job, which is, you know, should be said, is quite a good thing uh, for a captain such as yourself. 
But yeah, um, I guess I'm curious, where would you be heading on your tour first? Yeah, so I'd probably be heading to main engineering to see what's going on. And as I'm walking through, I'm not really correcting anyone, just introducing myself, trying not to linger if I can tell that people are nervous, just mostly to take myself a tour. Like I said, he's I've been on older ships for a really long time, so this is also a tour for myself to see the new ship. Okay. Uh, I tell you what, let's do the very first roll of the campaign. Uh, I'd like you to roll me a insight and command, uh, difficulty zero. And if you have anything that involves composure or people reading or body language reading, uh, this would apply. How about team dynamics or empathy? I will let empathy apply. Okay, bear with me. I haven't used this for a sheet. Sure. Let's see. So I think the big difference between the sheets we use on Friday and this one is you just click one of the attributes and then it pops up a little window that walks you through everything else. Cool. Insight command, right? Uh-huh. Uh, wow. I, yeah, wow. That's four momentum to start off with. Very nice. Um, it's a great way to start. It is. Uh, so what I'll say is the overall feeling you're getting from the people you're passing is that even the ones that stop to salute you or even the ones that go the extra mile to introduce themselves, there is just a level of professionalism on this ship that, frankly, might even just be a, brush, a breath of fresh air. Um, they are committed to their tasks. They're, they appear to be very, very diligent. And it's almost like there's a level of, of expectation from one another where the crew, even though they're, you know, new, because you're quite literally maybe a day out of Stardock, um, the crew already appears to be reliant on one another. And that is something that I would think you as captain might find either odd or perhaps very refreshing. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably love it. And as I see everyone working efficiently, probably just let them do their jobs. Cool, cool. All right, so in that case, we're going to cut to engineering, where I believe we have Mr. Riley. So Riley, as I get the captain's token on screen, uh, if you could do the same thing he did, just tell us which character you're playing, uh, tell us a little bit about their physical appearance, and then uh, anything else you think we should know. Well, uh, Lieutenant Commander Richard James Riley, he is uh, about five foot six, bit of a stocky build, He's got broad shoulders. Um, he looks like he could really def do well in a fight. Um, but his face is more um, happy. He ha people see him and smile because he's, he always has a good, happy look on his face. Um, now, he always seems to have a 5 o'clock shadow, and his hair is a little too long because he seems to put a little more effort into his work than his look, his appearance. Uh, but otherwise, uh, that's Richard Riley. Awesome. So, uh, you're at work working on quite literally anything you'd like to make up, and you would notice, <laughs> mostly because one of the fellow engineers says, uh, Captain on deck. And sure enough, you look up and you see Mr. Miller has walked into the room. Oh, uh, Captain, uh, I, is there, oh, uh, is there an, uh, an inspection... Did I forget that there's an inspection? Oh, oh no, Commander! Please, please continue as you as you were, everyone. I just wanted to stop by and see how things are going. Now, kind of walk okay. down the steps to, to Riley. I don't like inspections. I offer up my hand hand to you. Hello, Com uh, Lieutenant Commander Riley, Jeff Miller. Nice to meet you. I take your hand, give you a, a hearty handshake. Um, C Captain, I have to say it's it's a it's quite an honor to be posted here on the Akagi. I'm used to working on ships that, uh, well, they required a lot of work. This ship almost seems to run itself. I know exactly what you mean. I just came off of Lexington, one of the first Constitution classes to, to roll out of dock. And I have to say, she's an impressive ship, although quite a bit larger than I'm used to. Actually, it, that was going to be one of my first questions. How is, um, how is engineering finding you? Well, other than finding my way around... Uh, Everything is in tip-top shape. Everyone assigned to this ship seems to know exactly what they're doing. Well, we're Starfleet. I, that doesn't really come as a surprise to me, but it's always good to hear. Is is there anything you need? And if I may interject, uh, Riley, you look or you would notice that a light is beeping on the console uh, directly uh. to your right. 
Uh, one second, Captain, and I uh, I take a look at the uh, the console. Of course. All right. So as you look at the console, uh, no roll needed. Uh, you see that probably as you know, Starfleet is supposed to run. Uh, it's literally just a reminder that the upcoming maintenance cycle will be knocking main power offline for approximately 10 minutes. But this is an expected event. Captain, it appears that the main power will be off for uh, offline for about 10 minutes. Don't worry about it. It's just, uh, just maintenance. Okay, sounds good. And I, I go back to the console... And I start, um, I start preparing for the maintenance. And probably by that time, I, Miller, I, I get the clue that my engineer's got a lot to do and I don't want to be a captain of the covers. <laughs> so I, I start to maybe introduce myself to any of the engineers that aren't terribly busy and then kind of work my way around, just taking a glance just, just to see how things are before I walk out of main engineering. Gotcha. Yeah. So, you know, you introduce yourself to a few people who, for the moment, will rename, uh, remain nameless. But if we need to give them a name, they will get one. Um, so where would you be heading next, Captain? I would probably be heading to find Lieutenant Commander Zarya. All right. Well, you're going to find her in her office. So let me push you onto this map, and I will describe what you're seeing. So the benefit of having a new vessel fresh out of Stardock is that there's a lot of, shall we say, quality of life changes. And one of those quality of life changes is that you quite literally have a Arboretum. Now, it's not especially large, but the main distinct feature is that Lieutenant Commander Zarya's office is a branch off from the Arboretum. And when you walk in, uh, Mr. Miller, you do see that there are, uh, you know, a few crewmen walking the paths. Uh, there's one that's currently fishing in the pond, even though that there's no fish to speak of. And uh, you do spot uh, Lieutenant Commander Zarya at her desk uh, across the way. And I guess, uh, and Nick, if you could uh, do the introduction, and that would be great. Sure. I play our ship's counselor, a Denobulan lady named Zarya. Um, and she is probably about 160 centimeters tall, like 5'2", approximately. And she usually wears her hair pulled back and it's rather curly. Otherwise, she looks like the basic Denobulin. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, she is working at her desk doing some paperwork. All right. So yeah, Captain, you see all of that. I, I think as I would walk in, I kind of just looking around and not just awe. I mean, of course, I've seen an Arboretum before and I'm probably just taken aback by the scale of this Arboretum is much more than I do. And then I'll probably peer over and see whoever is fishing in the pond and maybe give them a look. Uh, they, Great uh, that you're doing that, but you're probably not achieving much, but I won't. I'll just let them do whatever they're doing. They, uh, the, the ensign who appears to be fishing just kind of waves at you, Captain, but otherwise just kind of focuses on his work. And I'll just kind of chuckle and shake my head as you as you were, Ensign, and, and make my way along the path to the, the commander's office. All right. So yeah, Zarya, you you look up and all of a sudden you notice that the captain is here to see you. Uh, she's going to stand up right away and salute. Um, hello, Captain. Is there anything that you need me for? Hello, Lieutenant Commander Zarya. Uh, please, please, at ease. We're at space dock, and I. Did my hand to you. It's, it's very nice to meet you. Welcome to Akagi. I'm happy to be here. It's definitely a step up from my previous assignment. It's such a new ship. It, it is indeed. Nice. It is indeed. And quite a, quite a view you have here. I think you may have picked one of the best spots on the ship. Hopefully it'll bring peace to everybody's minds to spend a little bit of time here. I know I'm appreciating it so far. I've been to many planets, but uh, the planet I grew up on, Camus 3, is kind of a dust ball. It's always quite refreshing to see so much green, and I have to admit, after all these years, I'm still taken aback. Well, you're always welcome to come visit and take some time off from all of your stressful duties. Well, I have to say, so far, the ship is kind of running itself. Uh, the crew 
performing admirably. It's not much for a captain to do. But along that note, is how are things? Is there anything you need? Um, not at the current time. I'm just trying to make sure that everyone's baseline assessments are all sorted with so that, you know, as time goes on, once people start feeling unusual, we can know how they felt at the beginning of the trip. And if anybody needs to take some time off, we'll know. That's great thinking. I have not made my way down to visit the colonists yet. That's probably going to be one of the next parts on my journey, just to check in to, to see how they're doing. I think we're still about two weeks away from their destination, but I'm not sure how many of them are very comfortable with space travel. Well, if you need my help for anything, you just got, need to ask, and I'll be happy to help you with uh, getting to know the colonists if you need me for anything. I thank you, Commander. I will probably give you a call when it comes time to talk to them. If anything, they, they might could use another person to confide in if there's anything that you need. At this point, I'm kind of looking around. I've got to find the turbo lift. I think I probably should check in with the bridge. Uh, I think there is one down the hallway to the left. If you go out uh, the closest door, she points to the one that is on the left of the screen to her right. Oh, uh, hallway should bring you towards the right way. Ah, Thank you, Commander. I'll give that a shot. Very nice. See you later, Captain. Away. Alrighty. So, uh, we'll say that you get a good way down the corridor, and it certainly seems that Zarya's uh, directions are good. Uh, you certainly see that there is a turbo lift, but before you can get into it, uh, Captain, you do hear a little chirp at one of the wall panels that you pass by, and the chirp is pre uh, preceded by... Uh, this is uh, Lieutenant Commander Jensen to Captain Miller. Please respond, Captain. Hello, Mr. Jensen. This is the Captain. Go ahead. Well, whenever you're bu uh, not busy, sir, we would like to see you in sickbay, please. Is this an emergency? Oh, no, not at all, sir. But as Chief Medical Officer, I did want to make the uh, appropriate statements since this is our inaugural journey. Of course, Lieutenant Commander. I'd like to check up with the bridge first, and then I promise you'll be next on my list. Very good. Sick bay out. And yeah, let's say at this point, you hop on up to the bridge. So, uh, this is where we're going to introduce uh, Commander Zines. Uh, so, Walter, if you would care to uh, introduce your character. Uh, sure. Uh, Commander Kevil Zines. Um, is a veteran. He's older for an Andorian. Um, stark white hair as, as normal Andorians. Um, he's spent the last um, 15 to 20 years actually at Starfleet Academy teaching uh, small craft piloting and helmsmanship, um, which is where he's sitting on the bridge as the helm and the tactical officer on, on the Akagi. Uh, before that, he served a very long stint on USS Eagle, which was an all Andorian um, crewed uh, ship, actually members the last vestiges of the Imperial Guard. He's very uh, stoic, um, does not crack a smile very much, um, but does seem to actually like the people around him. All righty. And Mr. Zines, uh, you hear the turbo lift door open, and stepping out is the captain. Uh, and Zines will uh, quickly stand to attention and holler out, Captain on the deck. All right. And as you could expect, uh, all the uh, crewmen currently on duty do stand and salute the captain. And as I walk on, I kind of shake my head almost a little sheepishly, sheepishly as they, oh, everyone, please, as you were, as you were, nothing to see here. So, number one, how's it? How's the ship doing? Well, Captain, I, uh, it's a lot different than Starfleet Academy, and it's a lot different than old, old, those old constitutions. I'll have to agree. I think I got lost on Deck 5 for about 15 minutes before I found a turbo lift, but she's a pretty good ship. So far, the crew seem to be working very effectively together, which is always good to see. Of course, Captain. Uh, though, and he'll kind of take in all of the computer banks and everything around him. 
I feel as if this ship, we could push a couple of buttons and it would run itself for the rest of its its existence. Oh, don't, don't worry about that, uh, number one. Uh, no computer is ever going to re replace the cheery disposition of an Andorian. Hmm. Uh, so when would you like to talk about the uh, life support situation on the bridge, sir? It's uh, a little bit too warm in here. And Zines will kind of crack a s micro little smirk as he says that. Well, I believe you could take that up with Mr. Riley, our chief engineer, our very capable chief engineer, if there's any temperature adjustments that need to be made. My, my first question is, number one, do you still remember how to fly a starship? Hmm. Well, it's a lot bigger than the shuttlecraft that I've been teaching all those kids how to fly, so we'll see if I can get her out of uh, space dock without rubbing the sides, sir. It's always That's always good to hear. We wouldn't want to break the new shiny on our first mission. Mm. Uh, in fact, have you? Is there anything on long-range scanners? Or are we? We're sort of out here in the frontier. It looks like. Uh, and Zines will actually turn to Ensign Cruel. Ensign. Yeah. So uh, to kind of describe uh, what Ensign Cruel is like, uh, they are a Cation. Uh, they have stark, uh, stark yellow eyes that, uh, if they could glow, it's it's kind of like a, it's almost an unnerving yellow. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, but other than that, she's your typical female Cation. Uh, she wears more of the skirt style uniform. Uh, she also is a, um, how do I say this? Uh, her body is covered in fur. Uh, she has a tail. Basically, if you were to imagine a, uh, a cat made humanoid, that's kind of what a Cation looks like. And, uh, for my games, I usually trend less towards the, uh, shall we say furry side of things and more towards the humanoid side of things. And that's just a style choice that I do. Um, but Cerule is kind of the same ops personnel that Zines is in that uh, she sits next to him and she is in charge of the same things that he is. So it's kind of like uh, Chekhov and Sulu were on the original series. So Cerule uh, says, of course, sir. And she runs a sensor scan. So uh, because she is a supporting character, uh, whichever one of you would like to do the role for her, you can. Uh, Sarul is going to be rolling a reason and a science at a difficulty of one. And the Akagi will be assisting with sensors science. Uh, I'll, I'll do Sarul. Okay. And you, uh, I'm sorry, you said what and science? Uh, reason and science for Sarul. Gotcha. And sensor science for Akagi? That is correct. Um, and she does not have any applicable focuses, so. All right, I get, uh, I see one success, which is all you need. So, uh, Sorul looks at the data, looks at it a little bit more, and then reports, Well, sirs, I'm not seeing anything of note. We appear to have smooth flying between here and... She gets about halfway into that statement when the entire ship shudders. Now, it's not a knock-you-out-of-your-seat shudder, but it is still turbulence that you feel despite the inertial dampeners. I'm going to tap the command on my chair. Uh, this is bridge. This is bridge to Mr. R Riley. Mr. Riley, is that energy or power outage you just promised? Did that just happen? Uh, Captain, that wasn't it. Give me one second. Let me figure this out. Uh, so, Riley, if you could roll me another insight or reason plus engineering, uh, I'm going to make the difficulty here a two. And I get a bonus dice because I know my ship. You do indeed. Very nice. Three successes, which means I believe you guys are up to five momentum. So, uh, what you're going to find, Mr. Riley, is that uh, nothing's wrong with really any system on the Akagi. Uh, everything checks out. Captain, I can't... I don't see anything wrong. We all felt that. That's not a good sign. You know, number one, let's maybe go to yellow alert. Kind of far from, Kind of far from civilization out here. Uh, Captain, yellow alert it is. 
so the lights across the ship uh, turn to that flashing yellow. Uh, the bridge lights dim a little bit and come to life with uh, lighting closer to the floor. And as a point of order, shields also are raised because yellow alert is shields up. So, Mr. Zines, I take it that you haven't detected anything, or sorry, Mr. Curl, to take it that you haven't detected anything on scanners, right? Uh, no, sir. Uh, I'm running another scan now, sir, but my best guess is that we simply hit a small pocket of subspace turbulence, sir. Okay. Well, number one, sorry for all the jokes about your piloting, uh, but maybe we should just continue on course and hope we don't encounter this again. Hmm. Yes, Captain. I was hoping this was one of your uh, jokes or tests to see if I knew how to react on piloting this big of a ship, but I see it is not. Uh, missed opportunity. And uh, Zines will set course for wherever we are going. Okay. Well, uh, you're currently en route. You don't really have to worry about changing anything on the helm direction at the moment. But uh, as you all have realized and have said, uh, the ship is pretty much flying itself at this point. Can I, um, before we go forward, mm -hmm. can I do a, I'd like to make sure that whatever that was did no damage to the warp core or the warp engines. Uh, I would say that would be a reason and engineering uh, difficulty one. Actually, you know what? I'm going to make it a difficulty three because I think this is not only a good chance to use some threat, but because it also lets us handle momentum. Um, so is everybody able to see their own cards or because I don't see anyone with momentum at the moment? Oh, uh, I have not been pulling any because I don't okay. think I've earned any. Yeah, I haven't been pulling cards either. All right, well, someone. It doesn't, you know, I'm not going to nominate names, but someone. I'll hold on to them. Okay, cool. Um, all right, awesome. So, uh, Riley, uh, it is a difficulty three task, which means that by default, uh, you have a uh, pretty low chance of succeeding. Uh, but this is where momentum comes into play. So the way the momentum spend works, if you aren't familiar with it, is it is one momentum for one additional die. Uh, it is a total of three momentum to get two additional die, and then six momentum for an additional three dice. I would like to just use one momentum. Okay. Um, I do have a focus in warp core mechanics. Definitely would apply. All right. Do I, have, I pull one of these tokens out to the center? That Nick's already got it. Perfect. That, that's way easier than what I was trying to do. All right, reason. And uh, while he's rolling that, I will apologize to uh, the stream a little bit. It seems that I did not crop the roll window properly, but I will have that fixed uh, by next session. Okay, there we so go. three successes with Riley. Very nice. Uh, yeah, you're going to realize that uh, something very important has happened. And by that, I mean that uh, you're detecting a point zero 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 one variance in your subspace field. Now, you know, that's the, the, it's almost insignificant how much the variance is, but at the same time, the fact that you're seeing any variance at all might be concerning. You might write it off as just equipment or the ship itself, but it is something you do note. I would like to spend one more momentum. Okay. To gain information. You certainly can. Do I feel like this variance will have any impact on our ability to warp safely? Uh, no, it should have zero effect on your ability to maintain or go to higher warp. Okay. So, Captain, there's a very, when I say very, I mean very, very slight change to our to our, um, what did you say it was, sorry? Uh, warp bubble will work. To the <laughs> to the warp field. Um, it should not affect our ability to go to warp, but I'm going to put a team on figuring out exactly how this happened. That, that sounds good, Mr. Riley. Appreciate your discretion there. That's That sounds like a good plan. If, if anything changes, of course, please let us know, and we can make any changes. I don't think we have any 
critical timelines to meet as long as a ship is proceeding safely. That's what's most important. And then I proceed to start yelling at various people in the uh, engineering room because I don't like it when when things change like that. Understandable. All right. So uh, while that's all going on, uh, I would say that aside from your little bump in the road, everything resumes being quote unquote as normal. Uh, so I know Miller, uh, you wanted to possibly check in with the colonists, uh, but did you want to meet with anyone before that? I don't think so, but I think same as usual, I would circle around the bridge, just introduce myself to people, see how they're doing. Okay. You know that. I think I would, I think I'd like to create an advantage for us if I could. It's been too, too momentum there. And let me sell this to you. I'd like the advantage I'm creating that we're just prepared. Like I, I think... Miller's spidey sense tingled when we got this bump. Mm -hmm. So the the advantage I'd like to create is everyone's just ready. So maybe the first surprise thing that happens to us, we might reduce the difficulty by one. I'll take it. Sure. Cool. Not saying people have to stay on like past duty shifts or anything, but just, you know, getting everyone ready for something that might. General level of uh, readiness and anticipation. I gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, after you've done all that, uh, would it be safe to say you go to check in with the colonists? Yeah, I think so. I'd say, uh, number one, I think you've got the bridge. I'm going to go see how our passengers are doing. Aye, uh, Captain. Uh, Ensign Cerule, please lower the temperature two degrees. Have Lowering a good time, by Captain. five, sir. And I just chuckle as I go in the turbo lift. <laughs> all right. So, uh, we're going to cut to the cargo bay. And I think because I've said it to you guys, but not to the stream, it's worth qualifying what's going on. So, the Akagi is a experimental uh, Excelsior vessel. And by that I mean uh, it is sort of a Starfleet experiment as to whether or not a carrier-style vessel will work. And since the Akagi was in space dock, uh, when this sort of order from on high came in, the Starfleet Corps of Engineers basically took the Akagi and said, yeah, let's hollow it out. Let's give it uh, extra room for colonists, for cargo, for shuttlecraft, and things of that nature. So, Captain, when you do walk into the main sort of shuttle bay slash cargo bay, the first thing that strikes you is just the sheer scale of what you're seeing. This thing can easily fit... Uh, not only runabouts, but so much support crew and support staff and supplies that it might even be possible to quite literally live off of it for 50 years. There's just that volume of supplies here. Oh, I forgot to mention, I probably would have pinged Zarya okay. if she was free. Yeah, I will go down and meet with him as well. Very good, Zarya. You walk in and see this just the same. And yeah, I'd, pr I'd probably look around like a kid in a candy store. Say, wow, this is um, this is really something. Mr. Zari, I'm not exactly familiar with your last posting, but uh, is this is unusual, right? This is not the normal Starfleet operations anymore of making shuttle bays this large, right? Not usually. I think they upgraded the ship since we're going to be going on different missions than most of the other ships have been built for. I think it's just something experimental. Well, I'll try to contain my excitement, at least when we're in front of our guests. Uh, so, let's maybe, let's see if there's anything we can do for them. Yeah. And, as is dramatically appropriate, a uh, gentleman of color comes up to you. A, he looks to be a very impressive man. He uh, looks like he works out. Uh, he is uh, sporting a sort of a goatee around his mouth. And he looks uh, very serious. He, he looks to be the sort of person that uh, you don't want to mess with. But it, all that sort of vanishes when he extends his hand to you, Captain, and cracks a what I would qualify as a sincere smile. And very jovially, he says... Ah, you must be Captain Miller. Uh, my name is Henry Edgar. Uh, I will be the governor for the colony when we arrive. Very nice to meet you, uh, Mr. Edgar. My name is Jeffrey Miller, and this is uh, my officer, Lieutenant Commander Zarya. And after he shakes your hand, Captain, he does the same for Zarya and says, 
pleasure to meet you both. Uh, Very nice to what to meet do you. I? To what do I owe this uh, this visit? Is everything all right? Well, I just wanted to check in, Mr. Edgar, to see how are things, how, how you guys are holding up, and if there's anything you need. Well, there is one thing, sir. Uh, I honestly don't think it's a problem, but about uh, 30 minutes ago, I asked my assistant, uh, Mr. Guest, to acquire something for me, and I haven't heard back from him. Should have only taken about five minutes, but... Yeah, as I said, it's been more like 30 at this point. Well, Mr. Edgar, it's a very large ship. I and myself have been lost a few times. Uh, if you'd like, I could send security to take a look around and see if we can find Mr. Guest. If you feel that is prudent, sir, uh, I'm certainly not going to complain. And maybe I'll pull out my communicator from my belt and flip it open. Uh, Jeffrey Miller to Captain Miller, rather, to security. And a currently unnamed Ensign answers and says, this is security, sir. Go ahead. Currently trying to track down a Mr. Guest, and I kind of nod to Edgar because I don't remember if they said if it was a male or female. Uh, he is a gentleman much as myself. Looking for one of the colonists. His name is Guest. It looks appears if he's probably gotten lost in one of the corridors. If you would mind sending a team around, uh, Mr. Edgar, around, where were they headed on the ship? Uh, they were simply headed to the Arboretum, I believe. Oh, Okay. I turn to Zarya. Zarya, you wouldn't happen to have seen anyone by that description, would you? I haven't, but perhaps they got there after I left. I can always go back up and take a look. No, no, it's fine. I think security could probably light up and then continue on my communicator. So security, they were last seen on the Arboretum, if you wouldn't mind taking a look. And if you find them, maybe escort them back down to the rest of the colonists in case they've gotten lost. Of course, sir, but one final check, sir. You did say Mr. Guest, correct? And as I'm saying yes, I'm kind of looking at Edgar just to making sure that I'm not getting that wrong. Yes, okay. guest. He nods, and after a moment, security replies, uh, Sir, we have no record of a Mr. Guest. Sorry, Mr. Edgar, guest is a first name or a last name? Uh, that would be his last name, sir, and I'm pretty darn sure he was on the manifest when we checked in. I mean, I literally was talking to him 30 minutes ago. Well, it's okay. Mix-ups like this happen sometimes. Uh, security, this person may not have been on the manifest, or there may be some sort of mix-up. Of course, sir. And should we... I mean... And, you know, there's there's obvious hesitation in this man's voice as he's talking to the captain, and he says, uh, Well, sir, uh, I suppose if you would like, we could also run a check on the other 297 colonists and see if there's anyone else missing. That wouldn't be a bad idea, Ensign. Great thinking. Let's just... They're our guests, so let's not try to be... Let's try not to be too invasive of their privacy, but if you have a way to check to see if they're there, that would be a bad idea. Okay. Uh, as you sort of uh, close your communicator, I would like both Mr. Miller and uh, Miss Z uh, Zaria, uh, if you could both roll me a... We'll call this a reason or an insight plus command and the difficulty for each of you will be a two uh and you're not assisting each other on this this is purely to see if your character notices something have a focus in empathy would that pick it up or tactics i would say tactics could apply here okay give me one second sure roll 20 is being agreeable as always. <laughs> All right, so that's uh, three successes on Miller's part, so it'll go up to two momentum. Oh, it kicked you entirely, Nick, didn't it? Wow. Oh, yes. Good old roll 20. Stop right loading need it. and. Okay, now it's loaded back in. Rule 20 is trying its best. That's all we can ask from you, Rule 20. Just do your best, buddy. I'd love for it to show me my character sheet. There we go. <laughs> so what was the second one? Uh, either a reason or an insight plus command. And the difficulty is two, and you have two momentum at the moment. Uh, 
Um, so what should I put down for the dice pool? Uh, it is a default of two dice, okay. uh, unless you would like to buy one with momentum. And feel free if you'd like. We have got that momentum to spend. Well, you do get the two successes, which is good. So something's going to occur to each of you about the same time. The security officer just said that there were 297 colonists, but you're pretty sure when you looked over the reports and the manifest, there were 300. So there is a missing three individuals. So that's the manifest is wrong? Or the number of people we brought on the ship would be wrong? You don't know. Kind of look at Zarya. Uh, Commander, there seems to be a discrepancy here, if you wouldn't mind checking. They said 297, right? I thought we were supposed to have 300 colonists. Yeah, I believe it was around 300 that we were transporting to the colony. Um, could it be an error in the computer system? That would seem always, unusual, but... That's always possible. It is a new ship. Uh, let's go directly to the source, maybe. Mr. Edgar, could you confirm for us, it's a little fuzzy, exactly how many colonists should be on board the ship? And as he's saying this, uh, Zarya, I would like you to roll me a insight and con, please. The difficulty here will be a three, so you might want to spend some dice on momentum. Or reverse that, momentum on dice. Sure, I'll spend a momentum. All right, that will give you a three dice to roll. Yep. And then three... There we go. All right. So uh, what I'll say is, as he's... I'll say this succeeds at cost because it's kind of important. Um, as he's sort of... Oh, hello, Jet. Go away. No, go the other way. Sorry about that. Um, as Edgar is talking, you notice that there's almost like a confusion, but he's confused as to why he's confused, if that makes any sense. Um, but Edgar says... Uh, yes, sir. There was always 296 individuals in the group. And I kind of look over at Zarya like, maybe I've missed something. We were told 300 and then 297, then 296? I think something is... Probably very wrong here. That doesn't seem like a normal thing to happen. Can we double check in the computer again? You certainly can. Uh, so we'll say, uh, Zarya, uh, you go over to a uh, console and call it the manifest, and the number is now 295. Uh, Zarya is going to hurriedly come back over to the captain. There seems to be... Oh my gosh, I can't remember... It's not colonists. For some reason, I wanted to say pioneers. I mean, it would have applied. <laughs> yes, it would have applied. For some reason, I believe colonists are going missing. I don't like uh, the sound of that, Lieutenant Commander, and I flip them in my communicator. This is Miller to the bridge. This is the bridge, Captain. Number one, we might have some disappearing colonists on our hands. If you wouldn't mind, I'd like a sensor scan, if you could, of everyone on board this ship. I'd like to know exactly how many Starfleet personnel and how many colonists. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, would it be acceptable if I raise shields in case these people are being transported off the ship? Out of character. I think we were still at yellow alert, right? So I think our shields would be up. In Correct. Oh, yeah, yeah, your cool. shields are currently our shields up. Are cool. up. Cool. 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 Uh, yes, Captain. We'll get on that right now. All right. So, uh, Zines, if you could roll me a, uh, we'll call this either a reason security or a reason science, and the ship is going to assist with a reason or a sensors and security. I can handle a Kagi. All right. Oh, difficulty. Uh, difficulty here will be a two. Okay, so you got an assist from Akagi. Okay, and I don't think I'm fairly certain I don't have any uh, applicable focuses unless Starship Tactical Systems would work. Nah, unfortunately not. Okay. 
All right, well, you get the two successes. So you're going to learn two very important bits of information. The first is that of the 750 crew that are expected, uh, all 750 Starfleet personnel are present. Uh, however, when you do the scan for the colonists, you see that the number is now 294. Uh, Captain, internal sensors are showing all 750 Starfleet personnel accounted for. However, I'm only reading uh, now 293 colonists. And number one, do you have any idea why that number might be changing? Uh, not currently, Captain. Uh, I can do a full... Um, check of the sensors to see if it is the sensors that are malfunctioning. Let's, yeah, let's maybe pull out all the stops. So if we could bring the ship to a halt, and if you could work with Mr. Riley to see if there's anything going on with the sensors. I'm also going to coordinate with ship security. I think we could do this visually, round up all the colonists in this large shuttle bay we have, and visually verify that they are all here. Yes, Captain. Uh, I will get with engineering and we will get on this. Thanks, number one. And then I close my communicator. Well, actually, I'll flip it open and I'll say, okay, security team, this is the captain. Uh, yes, sir. What can we do for you, sir? We are running that search as requested. Thank you, Ensign. I also need another security team to the shuttle bay. We need to do a head count of the current colonists that we have. This number is decreasing of colonists, and we don't know where they're going, but I'd like to visually do a head count of the remaining colonists that we have here, round them up, and make sure no one else disappears. Understood, sir. We will be there shortly. And I turn to Zarya. This is very strange. It certainly is, but I think if we can keep an eye on all of the colonists by having them in one place, that'll at least make it a little bit easier to track what might be happening. I mean, they would have to disappear right before our eyes, at least. What I'm thinking is, as well, Lieutenant Commander, I'm hoping that if we can keep them visually, uh, visually under watch, we can figure out what's going on here and rule out, any, rule out any sort of ship difficulties. If you don't mind, I noticed Mr. Edgar was acting a little strangely. If you wouldn't mind keeping an eye on him, and I'll coordinate with the security teams and see if we can start checking in colonists. That's a lot of colonists we're going to have to work through. Certainly. I'll keep an eye down here. So, you know, you guys have this conversation, but when you look back to where Edgar was, he's not there anymore. I'll look to Zarya. Sorry, did you see him go anywhere? No, I did not. I was uh, talking with you, Captain. I'm going to turn to an ensign who's on the side, mm -hmm. perhaps, um, and ask if they saw where um, the governor of the colonists went. I forget his name right now. I just had it. Edgar. On screen. Edgar, Sorry. yes. Where uh, Edgar went. So uh, the ensign says... Uh, I, I don't know what you mean, ma'am. Uh, I saw that you were talking with the captain, but you weren't talking with anyone else. Thank you, Edson. And I'll return to the captain. Um, it doesn't seem like our staff necessarily knows where he is either. Um, it's very unusual. He didn't seem to remember Edgar at all. That is odd. And I'll grab one of the colonists. I'm assuming there's more colonists. Oh, yeah. You can just grab however things. many you want. Okay, I'll, I'll, yeah, maybe I'll grab just a handful of colonists. Mm -hmm. And I'll ask them, like, who is the governor of your colony? Uh, that would be uh, Lieutenant, or not Lieutenant. Uh, that would be Governor Smith, sir. And do you know anything about a Mr. Edgar? They look at you confused. Uh, no, I, I don't think anyone among us is named Edgar. Tall gentleman, uh, looks kind of uh, like a moving wall almost. And, you Have you know, ever heard of this guy? Uh, the colonists kind of look at one another and go, 
And now I, I don't think we have anybody like that. So this is interesting. Zarya, not only are they disappearing, it appears as though people are forgetting about them. The question is, why do we still remember them? Is there something different about us? I'm not sure that that would be the case. Apart from our charming good looks, I'm not sure what would set us apart from them. Well, for now, we can continue on with the head count and hopefully keeping an eye on people and not necessarily turning away from them. <laughs> I'm not really sure. Um, we can at least get an idea of how large this problem is. I think you're right, Lieutenant Commander. I'll keep coordinating with security, but it looks like you've lost your, your buddy. Um, if, uh, yeah, maybe we can just do visual checks at this point. And, yeah, I know it's a lot of colonists, but if we can keep a visual eye on them to try to figure out when they're disappearing or what that even looks like, that may be a clue of what's going on. I'll definitely keep an eye out over here and keep everybody pretty calm. We don't want to worry them. Or else, who knows what we'll do with uh, just under 300 upset colonists on our hands. We'll keep it quiet. For now, at least. You know, and I open my communicator. Captain Miller to Lieutenant Commander Jensen. This is sick, babe. Go ahead, Captain. Mr. Jensen, we've got kind of a situation forming with the colonists. I was wondering if you could come down to the shuttle bay. We maybe could use your assistance. Of course, sir. And he cuts off mid-word, and just the calm goes quiet. Is everything okay, Captain? I just lost the doctor, and then I'll flip my communicator again. This is Captain Miller to the bridge, please. Uh, bridge here, Captain. Number one, I was just talking to Lieutenant Commander Jensen in sick bay, and he cut out. Is everything okay up there? Uh, everything is fine on the bridge. Uh, let me run that scan again one more time. All right. So, uh, if you could roll me another reason security and another sensor security from the ship, the difficulty this time is only going to be a one. He had said earlier in the scene uh, that he was going to talk to me about this. Can I give him an assist from engineering? Yeah, I would say that this would be fair for you two to work together on this. Uh, if you want to roll me a either a reason or an insight plus engineering, uh, you're only rolling the one die for the assist, but you can assist him. Perfect. Uh, and the ship can also roll, correct? Yes, the ship is rolling a sensors and security. I can do a cocky. So one success from uh, from me. Yep, so you guys are at your uh, two successes at the moment, which is one momentum. And, okay, so you guys get one momentum. I believe you're at two. So, remember how earlier I said that there were 750 Starfleet crew on board? That number's more like 740 now. And I guess the other important information, since Riley's assisting you is that, uh, Riley, you are damn sure that there is zero problem with the sensors. I immediately, and Zines would hear this through the communicator, uh, I immediately shout to everyone in engineering, Hey guys! Time for the button! And I make sure everyone has... I start going through the procedure to make sure everyone is working with, with another person. They're okay. attached at the hip. Buddy system. I got it. Uh, Zines will just answer back to that shout. Uh, good work. Good work, Chief Riley. Uh, Captain, uh, it appears that now, whatever this phenomenon is, it is also affecting Starfleet personnel. We are now down to 740 crewmen of our 750 complement that we left. And if I can interject before the captain replies, uh, next to you on the bridge, uh, Sarul looks at you very questioningly and says, Don't say it. Sir, we've we've always had 740. Oh, 
I, I thought you were going to say, uh, Commander Zines, I don't feel so good. <laughs> um, I, I'm going to look at Cerul and Ensign. There were 750 crewmen when we left dock. Uh, no, sir. I mean, here, take a look at this. And you see that she's pulled up sensor scans of when you left Stardock. Those sensor scans indicate 740 people. Ensign, respectfully, respect your elders. There were 750. I know how to count. And he'll type on he'll type on his his uh, uh, console and put it up on the main view screen of whatever the current count is mm -hmm. for colonist slash uh, three hundred and then crewman slash seven fifty, and then he'll look around the rest of the bridge. The number on the right is a number we should have. You need to find out why we don't have that number, and the reason is not because I am old and senile. And I'm going to spend some threat here. In the instance of you blinking, so like, you know, you're normally blinking, you're just looking around giving this order, you blink, and all of the bridge staff is gone, save for you. And that number has decreased to 720. After a very long pause, the signs will... Uh, Captain, I am currently alone on the bridge. I'm sorry, number one, I don't know what you mean. All of the crew members of the bridge literally vanished as I blinked, giving them an order. Do you so, know where they went? Captain, if I knew where they went, I would have already told you where they went, and we would have already found them. I will continue running sensors from the bridge. If for any reason you don't hear from me, let's say every 15 minutes, I would suggest someone else comes up to at least have a presence on the bridge. That is my suggestion anyways. Very good. Number one, I will be there shortly. All right. And uh, as people are moving about, we're going to very briefly cut to engineering. Uh, so Riley, you did institute a buddy system. And as you're working, you know, double checking to make sure that, uh, you know, the sensors are doing their jobs, or if there's a computer fault, um, I would like you to roll me another reason and engineering, please. And this will be a difficulty three. All right, I'd like to burn a point of momentum. All righty. And I will say that uh, you do know your ship, so you would actually get four dice on this. Perfect. I'll take it. Ooh, Ooh. complication. Uh, so there's a few things we can do about this. Um, I can either take that complication, or uh, you can use your determination to re-roll those two zeros, including the critical failure. Um, no, take the complication. All right. It's early. So the complication is, uh, as you're doing your own due diligence, you look around engineering and of the, we'll say about 12 individuals that were there initially, there's now five, including one individual who's working by himself. Have I been privy to the, the all the conversations that have been going on? Because I find it interesting, let's say that no, you are in the dark as to the disappearing situation. Okay. So I know... Okay. I... I look around and I notice people are missing. Mm -hmm. And I turn to... Uh, Ensign uh, Mendoza. Ensign, um, wasn't Jefferson standing right next to you? Jefferson, sir? Um, you know what? Never mind. 
and I'm going to start. Um, I'm going to try to remodulate the shields, hoping that that can maybe prevent uh, this happening again. I don't know what's happening, so I think maybe it's an outside threat that can cut through our shields. Fair assumption. Let's see. Uh, modulating shields. Here we are. So, uh, you would then roll me a control and security, and the Akagi will assist with a structure engineering, and the difficulty here is a two. Okay. I can do Akagi. All right. I got one. Got one. So we need to see at least one from the ship. What? Well, well. All right, so unfortunately, um, when you go to modulate the shields, like, sure, you change the frequency of them and you maybe set it on a rotation, but it doesn't have the full effect. I, I would think maybe I actually think it does. A until I see evidence that it's not working, I think I've, pr I've maybe figured this out. All right, fair enough. I'll take it. Uh, at this point... And I, I, oh, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't... I, uh, I communicate to Commander Zines... Commander, I've remodulated the shields. Uh, I think that should put to rest whatever's going on. Now we just got to figure out how to find our our people. Uh, very good, Chief. Uh, I will. Um, I will continue to work on that problem as well. Um, make sure your people are safe. Right. So very briefly. Oh, not the ready room. The bridge. Uh, so back up on the bridge very quickly. Uh, you notice, uh, Mr. Zines, that when you look at the number on the uh, view screen, your constant, the right-hand number, is changing. So before, when you first put up the countdown, I believe I said it was something like uh, 730 or 720 slash 750. That number is now 680 and slash about 700. Hmm. So, uh, for comical sake, while mm -hmm. Zines is up there by himself, he's going to lower the temperature. Again, um, got it. Uh, and I want to run scans of the whole of the ship to see if there is maybe something attached to the ship that is pulling people off. Mm -hmm. um, maybe not a, like uh, another ship or uh, a creature, but maybe radiation or something fair uh let's see i would say that uh this would be let's call it a uh, a reason science or a reason security whichever you would prefer okay. and then the akagi will assist will say sensors and security and the overall difficulty here will be let's call it a two okay um Can you that assist roll Yeah, and I, I don't, still don't have any applicable focuses, so we'll take a shot. All right, you nice. get the two successes you need. So, sweet, sweet. Um, I did want to make sure that I heard correctly. You guys did come to a stop, yes? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. So then uh, you're reading that the ship is at station keeping. It has not moved since it came out of warp. Uh, and at the same time, there is no unusual radiation that you're detecting. You're also not detecting anything attached to the hull. Uh, but when you look up at the numbers again, it's now 640 slash 680. And right about then is when Lieutenant Commander Zarya and Captain Miller, the turbo lift to the bridge arrives and you guys step in and it is freezing cold. <laughs> um, and they will walk into Zines over his console um, and muttering things like like, come on, Kevl, learn things, learn things. You have to learn things. There's got to be something here you can learn. Um, and he's just going to keep pouring over the sensors when they walk in. And I think the change in Miller is at this point, the smile that he always carries is probably faded away. He's all business at this point. I'd head directly to the other station next to Zines. And I'd probably motion for Zarya. Zarya, we could probably use your help at one of the operation stations. Certainly, I'm happy to assist in whatever manner you need me. And then I'll look to Zines. Number one, what can I do to help? 
we can make the number on the right side stop changing. Other than that, I, uh, I'm, I'm running out of ideas. I've already checked the hole for any irregularities. Check for radiation that could be causing or... Uh, what about subspace? How about we check... Can we check if maybe we're sitting in a subspace pocket or something along those lines? Um, and for all the little bit of time or most of the time that Miller has known of or known Zines, Zines looks really rattled for like the first time ever. Well, let's try uh, doing that. Number one, maybe start checking things off the list. Subspace scan, let's try it. All right. So I am going to spend uh, quite a bit of threat here. Uh, for reasons that may become apparent if you succeed. So this is going to be a difficulty four task. And now what I will say is that the Akagi will assist you, but only Zarya or the captain can assist. So you can't both assist. Um, but the scan will be a reason and science. And the ship will be assisting with sensors and science. And again, the difficulty is four. I'm also going to make the complication range in 18 to 20. And I guess I should say that it doesn't have to be Zines doing this check. Uh, one of you, either Zarya or Miller, uh, you could take the lead and then have someone else assist you. So it's really what you guys would like to do. I'm just going to throw this out there that science is not Zines' money stat. Yeah, that's my worst stat as well. I'm pretty okay at it. Uh... So maybe Zarya lead the check, and then one of us support, and then the the ship will also uh, uh, assist. Correct. Correct with sensor yes. science. Okay. And, and the main said, role is reason science. Correct. I'm real bad at that. Zines, what if you took the assist and I gave Zarya determination? Sounds good to me. So Zarya is a CEO. I'm going to give you a determination. Which means you've already rolled two successes. Okay, great. So from there, I'll do that roll. Um, I don't think I have an applicable focus. Uh, if you have subspace theory or anything along those lines, you would have a focus, but I don't think you do. Nope. Uh, I will say, though, you do have a point of momentum left over. You could go for broke and uh, spend that momentum for an additional die. Uh, would I be able to do that? Yeah, it's you can spend momentum for any kind of roll. Um, the other thing, I guess, since we're on the subject, is even if you don't have momentum to spend, uh, or you wouldn't have enough momentum to cover the cost, you can cover that cost with threat. So, for example, uh, you just spent one momentum for your third dice, and if you wanted a fourth die, uh, you would have to give me two threat. So it would normally be two momentum, but since you don't have momentum, it becomes threat instead. Okay, great. So I'm going to roll one more die. Okay. All right, so we got oh. one success from Zines. And then one success from Zarya already. And then so one more. Okay, and then the ship, right? Well, yep. Zarya should be rolling uh, two more die. I rolled two above. Did you? Ah, you did. Okay. Yeah, and then I decided to spend one more. So let's say this then, because uh, it is, you know, we've got new players here. So with uh, your point of determination, you do have the option instead of the two free successes, you can spend determination to reroll that zero. It would get rid of a complication, but it would also take away the two free successes you started with. Um, what do you guys think? Since I'm the newbie to this system. Well, I'm not afraid of complications. I say take the successes, let's figure this out. Who cares if we all die? <laughs> um, uh, I mean, with all of our roles as they stand right now, we have three successes, so the two automatic from the determination means not only do we succeed, but we get a point of momentum. Correct. Because you, you said the difficulty was four, correct? Correct. Oh, true. So we're... We also didn't have the ship roll yet. Oh, that is yeah, also right. correct. No ship yet. So yeah, let's let's roll for the ship, because if the ship gets another complication, we might have a problem. And Devil's Advocate 2, Zarya, with your score, 14 and 10, you have a 70% chance of a success. It's really good. 
Uh, I guess I'll roll the ship then. Yeah. Sensor science. All right, so ah. uh, that actually is a complication because remember the complication range is 18 to 20. So uh, again, as things stand right now, you have five successes, but two complications. And if you were to say, spend the determination to reroll, uh, you would go down to a minimum possible of one complication. So, so no matter what you do, you're at least taking one complication. Um, can we spin the momentum that I, I'm uh, shot in the dark here. Can we mm -hmm. spin the momentum if we choose to take the two successes? Can that momentum be spent to re-roll one of the zeros? Uh, unfortunately, I, I no. The only mechanic I'm aware of to re-roll dice is determination. Okay. I mean, unless you're, like, rolling challenge die, then yeah, if you're rolling challenge die, mm -hmm. you could spend the, the momentum to re-roll, but unfortunately that's, for normal task rolls, nah, there's there's not a whole lot you can do. That's probably what I had in my head of re-rolling zeros with momentum, so. Yeah. Okay, so let's do this, because I think it's in your best interests. Uh, let's take the five successes and the two complications, and so you will go up to one momentum, but several things are going to happen all at once. So, you know, Zarya, you're running the scan. Uh, you know, subspace theory wasn't always your strong suit, but you took enough classes at the academy to make do. And as you're scanning subspace, you notice something happen on sensors. Um, add a character, are you familiar at all with how a, uh, a sonar scan works? Yeah. Okay. So it's sort of like watching a sonar uh, scan on, say, an old submarine. Uh, you know, the, the line is rotating around the ship, and all of a sudden there's a blip. Uh, it's maybe about a kilometer off your port side of your saucer section. And at the same time as that blip, it lasts for maybe a fraction of a second. Zines and Miller, you notice that on the view screen... The numbers have changed quite drastically. The numbers are four out of four. No colonists, no other crew, except yourselves and Mr. Uh, Riley down in engineering. Uh, Bridge, I've got a major problem here in engineering. I'm gonna hit my communicator. Mr. Riley, if you could come to the bridge and if you could do it pronto, please. Uh, are you seeing the same thing I'm seeing? Yes, we're in the middle of a crisis. I, I think if we're all together in the same place, it's going to be easier to get things done. All right, on my way. And uh, <laughs> Riley runs <laughs> to the... To the turbo lift, I gotcha. Uh, yeah. I'll get you the results of your scan in one minute, Zarya, but for flavor's sake, uh, as you're running through the corridors, uh, Riley, you realize that... It's a ghost town. Like, you should be seeing someone on your way, but you're not seeing anyone. And I'll say that Can maybe you come across a door to a quarters that's, you know, that's left open, and you maybe glance inside. Uh, you see that the quarters are quite literally not used at all. It looks like that someone just made the bed, just came through cleaning, but you're seeing no personal effects, no nothing out of place it looks too spotless um can i do one thing sure i'd like to make sure i have a phaser on me in case we're being transported to somewhere i don't want to be i gotcha okay so yeah so i've, I've grabbed have... a type 2 phaser slapped it on my hip and i uh, i head to the bridge and i'm terrified because my last posting was an oberth class ship tiny so, seeing a ship this huge, completely empty, is mind-blowing. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. So, it's about this time that up on the bridge, Zarya, you're getting feedback from your scan. And you realize something rather important. You notice that even though you've dropped out of warp, there appears to be some form of warp bubble or subspace field that surrounds the entire ship. And... 
I don't think it's been said in character yet, so I can't give you this additional piece of information, but you could spend the momentum you just got to ask me a question. I think we need the info. Yeah, yeah. let's spend the momentum that you have, Walter, in order to ask for more information. Absolutely. Now, what's the question? I don't know. The hardest part is the question. To ask. I hope somebody else would have a question. I would love the information. Is our ship creating the warp bubble? Is your ship creating the warp bubble? Is that the question you'd like to go with? That's a good one. Yes, we're going to go with that question. All right. Then, yes, the answer is it is Damn indeed it. your ship that is creating the subspace bubble. All right. Uh, uh, off topic for a second. Mm -hmm. How do I get rid of the momentum? Because I've never done the momentum before. Uh, so you're going to click the little icon and it'll pop up a sort of a screen that says all cards in hand. Mm -hmm. And then you just uh, click and drag the card onto the map. Yep. And then you Gosh. just delete it. Uh, take card, flip card, resize. Uh, you just on your keyboard. Just select the token on your oh, and then hit delete. There you gotcha. go. Gotcha. Got it. Now I will say that you can ask me more questions, but it will cost threat. So the question that was asked was, is that other subspace thing being made by us? Well, we're still surrounded by a warp field, which shouldn't be possible if we're not at warp. But somehow our ship's creating the warp field. Gotcha. Okay. And, it, and it's definitely our ship creating it. Um, and we'll say just for sake of argument, by now, uh, Riley, you've arrived on bridge and heard all of this. I, I pop out of the, <laughs> I pop out of the turbo lift, grab the railing, and just, ah, ah, this ship ah, is huge. Ah, and then stumble, Mr. Riley, stumble yeah. over to a. Uh, a, a panel and start to start looking at it and try to figure. You know, number one, I might be paranoid, but it might be time to start locking down the ship in case this is some form of attack. If we're all removed from the ship, I don't want it to be taken over by something and used for anything nefarious. Understood, Captain. And signs will go to lock out all any kind of control from the rest of the ship, mm -hmm. and the only control for the ship can come from the bridge. Okay. Uh, I would say that this is a fairly simple task to do. Uh, if you could roll me a control security, and we'll say that the ship assists with computers and security, difficulty here is only a one. Um, and shipboard tactical, or starship tactical, or starship helm would not work? I'd say tactical would apply because you are quite literally locking everything down. Okay. Could Miller assist with that? If you can tell me how Miller is assisting. Oh, I I can absolutely tell you. Uh, we have to put in our command codes to make it work. Very there good. You go. Then, uh, yes, Mr. Miller, you would be rolling your own control security as an assist. It's like a piano, you know, he's playing the low notes, I'm playing, playing the high notes. But sense. with my advisor talent, Mr. Zions, you get a re-roll in 1d20. Um, I'm, I'm actually sort of quite happy with the Rolls that I made. Yeah, that's three successes already. You don't need so control security, right? <laughs> Correct. And then if either Zarya or Riley, if one of you could grab the ship, uh, the ship is doing and computers it's... and security. I got it. Would a focus in tactics perhaps come into play? Yeah, that would definitely apply here. All right, so no help from the ship. Not my fault. <laughs> and it looks like one success for Miller. So I believe that brings your total to three momentum. And yeah, you make it so that the only sort of operations that you can perform on the ship are from the bridge only. All right, Captain, the, uh, the ship is completely locked to only accept commands from the bridge. Thank you, number one. And I turned in my chair. Okay, everybody. 
Let's start coming up with some ideas. Nothing's too crazy. I'd like to, if we're creating a warp field, mm -hmm. I would like to check to see if our if we're at warp speed. Maybe our sensors aren't saying it, but are the warp engines engaged? Fair point. Uh, if you could roll me a reason engineering, and the difficulty for you will be a two. Do I get to use uh, I know my ship? I would say not in this instance, but you would still have a focus. All right, reason engineering. And you do have three momentum if you'd like to spend for additional die. I would. I'd like to spend more momentum. Okay, so that'll bring you up to three dice. Gotcha. Very nice. Yes! Very there we go. That's what I needed it. earlier. Uh, and that gets us... I believe you're how many more overall. Yeah, because so there's difficulty more. two and you got three. So yeah, you should be at five momentum overall. Sounds wonderful. Uh, so Riley, uh, you're going to notice, I keep saying it's something important. Um, you notice in particular that although you are not moving, that the ship's warp core is acting like you're going about warp five. Uh, but you can confirm the fact that you are not moving whatsoever. I would like to burn momentum to gain information. Okay, what's the question? Is something holding us? Okay. I would say no, nothing is holding you, and I'll give this to you for free. There is technically, as far as you're able to tell, nothing to say that if you shut down the warp core, that that field would not collapse. So you're saying I... Collapsing the warp core is a possible solu solution. It is one, yes. But if it's the right solution, that I can't tell you. I could destroy the ship. Especially if they're... Mm. Well, if I pass of... that information on, uh, and we're at warp. Of... Very interesting, go. Mr. Riley. Do you have any idea how this could have happened? Remember that point zero 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 one variance? I'm not sure I know what you mean. Well, statistically, I don't think this should have happened. I don't even know how people are disappearing. You said a zero but, point zero something variance. Uh, I need that in dummy captain talk, please. So when a ship goes to warp, the engines create a bubble around the ship that allows it to warp space behind and in front of the ship, and that allows us to move faster than light. Um, normally, if there's a serious issue with that bubble, it can cause the ship to be destroyed or create a wormhole effect. Um, we, when we, uh, when we ran into that subspace anomaly or subspace turbulence, it seemed to create a point zero 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 one variance in the field, and it seemed like nothing at the time. I had people looking at it. No one, no one uh, got back to me because all this happened, and my staff disappeared before they could finish their work. Um, but anyway, I think if I was to somehow manually shut down the warp engines, it would stop whatever is happening i'm afraid it would also destroy the ship well that would be a problem mr rally could we try a probe or something first uh i don't believe so because i think whatever's happening is happening because of our ship not something external can we not just power down the warp core and not like eject it just power it down age-old IT advice of turning it off and turning it back on again? We could. Um, I didn't think... We weren't at warp before. It just seems to happen. Like, everything that... We shouldn't be at warp. We're not moving. Well, why not give it a try? Let's do it. All right, so I want to be very clear on what we're doing here. Your goal is to shut down, not eject, shut down the warp core, correct? 
I turn yes. to number one. Number one, just to be safe, why don't we say this? Why don't we go ahead and launch launch the emergency buoy, record buoy, for the ship, just in case this doesn't. Work. Of course, Captain, and Zines will uh, do that. All right. And Zarya, yeah. so that you're not feeling left out, I will feed you a point of information if you give me a momentum. Sure, I was furiously writing down notes on today's session, but uh, I'm happy to trade the momentum Alrighty. for some more information. So, Zarya, at your science console, you seem to still have communication back with Starfleet. Would I be able to contact them and maybe ask them about the information in their computer system, like our that we gave them as we were leaving? Yeah, you could certainly do so. I'm going to maybe do ask that. them our maybe ask our current position. Mm -hmm. Our current position? Yeah, That's because a... okay, we're yeah. we're at warp and yet not at warp. Mm -hmm. So they might have knowledge of us being in a different place than we see ourselves in you mean that's possible okay yeah we can go with that All right. so you get some ensign back at starfleet hq and the ensign says uh well lieutenant commander uh it's a little bit odd but i'm showing records that the akagi left space dock with only four people i honestly don't know why that would be the case but that's what we're seeing here uh, we're also seeing that your position is, and he rattles off some coordinates, and it's very easy for you to look at those coordinates on your screen. The coordinates given are correct. Okay, so the coordinates are correct, but our leaving information is not correct, right? That is completely correct. Okay. Um, and I relay that to the rest of the crew. Thank you, Mr. Zoria. That compounds the mystery here. It seems is is. This phenomenon is not only localized to the ship, but also to everywhere. It's possible it's something that's not... It hasn't affected everyone else on the ship, but it's only affecting us. We could be having some sort of mass psychosis. You know, that no. bump that we hit back... That was that unusual bump we hit on our on our way to this location. Could that possibly have had something to do with this? Are you suggesting that this is all some sort of shared dream that we're having from bumping our heads falling over from the turbulence? I don't, I've hit my head many times. I don't remember doing it here. Although, you know what? I don't remember all of them anyways. Dear, dear God, I hope not. I hope this is not just a dream. My dreams are not like this. Well, I'd be very flattered to think that Zines is dreaming about me. I, I think if I were dreaming, I wouldn't have it so cold on the bridge. Hmm. And because oh. I find it funny, I'm spending two threat to make it literally snow on the bridge. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's great. Zines actually gets somewhat of a smile. Is the uh. snow coming from the vents or just from the ceiling? I will say from the vents, it's like someone is uh, literally put a snowblower into the vents and it's just spewing out. Uh, Captain, I'd like to officially state for the record that I had nothing to do with this. I kind of laugh. Huh? You know, at this point, number one, if you told me you did, I think I'd be okay with that. Uh, so then should we try this idea of shutting down the warp core and restarting it i think let's give that a shot we're sort of running out of options here i'd say hold on to the emergency buoy if we haven't already launched it don't think it's going to really do us any good mr raleigh riley your, your plan's the best we've got let's give it a shot <sighs> all righty then and um i look at the i look at my console first i want to see I want to confirm that the warp engines are active. We are moving. Mm -hmm. And then I would like to see what happens if I tell the warp engines to stop. All right. So you enter in your command code. Uh, you enter in the command. You push the button. 
Nothing happens. I swear I hit the button, Captain. I swear. And uh, because this is a perfect way to segue into a break, I'm going to spend some more threat to create a complication. And that complication is the ship, you're able to confirm this by looking out of the view screen, the ship begins to violently rock and otherwise sort of spasm in space. And you're all sort of thrown about uh, as this goes on. And then the entire bridge and everything around you goes dark. And that's where we're going to take our break. So uh, land softly because of the snow, right? Yeah, you know, you, you've got a little bit of cushion. All right, um, just want to clarify. So I'm going to put a timer on the screen for about 10 minutes. But if we're back before then, uh, we will resume. But yeah, uh, the good news is that uh, I do mute the stream so they cannot hear you uh, during the break. So uh, save anything like table talk uh, for this. You know what I'm trying to say. Uh, yeah. yeah, let's take a 10 minute break.
All right, everybody, welcome back from our break. And if you remember, we last left off with the Akagi basically going dark. Everything cut off, all the power went out, uh, you all were plunged into darkness. Now, I will say that this darkness maybe lasts mm, 15 seconds. Uh, but 15 seconds later, the power comes back up online like nothing ever happened. Is the snow still there? The snow is still there, yes. I, I start wiping it off of consoles. Like, that's not good. That's not good for the consoles. <laughs> and I look around. All right, everybody, shout out. How are you doing? Is everybody okay? I'm doing fine. Uh, I gotta admit, I haven't seen anything like this before. Uh, other than the fact that the only four people crewing this entire ship are on the bridge, I am doing just fine. Captain, I believe that you and I have made too many jokes about the fact that this ship can run itself. I think you might be right, number one. It's as if a higher power somewhere has heard our jokes and acted mischievously against us. Do you think that's it? Something's... Listening to us. And... Hey, whoever's out there, ice cream sandwich. Nothing At happens. this point, I I won't um, dismiss any any theory that you might have, Mister Riley. Do you have any idea? So the the darkness that we just saw was that power coming out of the ship. Any ideas? I'd like to do a uh, check to see if that was some sort of power failure, or well, that's I guess what I want to find out if that was some sort of power failure. Okay. Uh, this is just going to be a uh, reason engineering difficulty one. Do I get to use I know my ship? Sure, why not? Three successes. All right, so that gets you two momentum. I believe you're up to five. Uh, well, uh, according to the ship, there was no power outage. Like, there was no sign of any interruption to the bridge lighting. Uh, there was no sort of indication that power actually cut out. As far as the ship's concerned, everything's fine. I like to burn a momentum. Okay. Do all ships' systems look like they've been operating as normal? Yeah, they have been operating for whatever the appropriate uptime should be. Um, are... Are the numbers on the view screen changed at all? Like, as in, have the four of us been re, uh, like, brought back together with the crew? I'm glad you asked that question, and this will be something you all realize. When you look at the screen, your numbers... It's almost like someone has taken wet paint and sort of made it so it's dribbling down the screen. But the numbers say 666 slash 4. Uh, does anybody know why someone has defouled the captain's view screen? And if I find out who it is, they will not be happy. I'm going to go up to the screen and touch it. Yeah, is it real paint? Yeah, you touch it and your fingers come away with a crimson liquid. I... <laughs> oh no... I won't do what I was <laughs> about to do. Um, I show I show the, uh, the the rest of the crew. Um, yeah, that's that's there. Ah, uh, what is it? What is what does the numbers mean? I don't know. Is that some sort of reference? I'm not. I'm not big on history or religion, so I don't know what that means. Well, with my focus in history, as mm -hmm. I start to tell the crew, uh, apparently <laughs> there is references to that number back in ancient Earth history. There was quite a bit of hysteria and superstition around that number in certain religions uh, in ancient Earth. It's not a number that's associated with anything good, as far as I can remember. I was hoping that maybe 600 of our crew had come back. <laughs> Well, I mean, if someone is doing this to elicit a response, do they not realize that there are two members of the crew that are not 
human and we would not understand what this means? I don't get this. This isn't this isn't logical. Mm. Everything that our sensors say, everything is normal. Uh, can I ping the sensors to mm. get location and um, just a general scan of the entire ship for anything okay. out of the ordinary, other than the fact that there's only four of us? All right. Uh, since you have four momentum already, I'm just going to say that you do this scan. And uh, your scan turns back the result that, uh, well, to put it bluntly, you are detecting 666 individuals. Several, in fact, which should be on the bridge. But you ain't seeing them. I'd like to go into the conference room and look out the window. Okay. So you've done something very important, Mr. Riley. When you go to the conference room and look out a real window, you see that outside is almost like the interior of a red Matura nebula. And that is sort of a crackling amount of energy that flashes like lightning across interstellar gas, red in color. And yeah, you're, if you remember, the ship is or was also spinning. There is a slow amount of momentum as your ship seems to be drifting through this uh, turbulent, hellish zone. But hey, we can't uh, see any of this on the view screen, right? You do not see it on the view screen, no. You guys are going to want to check this out. And I get up from my station and walk over to Riley. And yeah, you see the same thing. I'm at a loss here, Mr. Riley. Do you have any idea what we're looking at? I have ideas. It's possible we're in some sort of alternate dimension. As I mentioned before, it's possible we're in some sort of mass psychosis. It's also possible that only one of us is suffering some sort of psychosis and the rest of us are dreams. Um... This can is I, weird, is what I'm saying. Do I know, or can I uh, ask the computer, the, the ship's computer, about that nebula that he sees, if it's known for messing with um, subspace or warp fields? So, uh, you query the computer, and the computer says, a cat's average temperature is the same as a human's before being introduced into an oven. That is correct. I... I... I under... Thanks, computer. <laughs> <laughs> Just what we needed. Is there a um, med kit on the bridge? There is. And uh, if you open the med kit, you see that there is a tricorder on it. Or in it, I should say. And this tricorder is the medical standard, which is important because, uh, as far as I'm aware, all of you would be carrying sort of standard issue tricorders. Yes. Well, at least I am. I I pick it up and uh, I scan myself. Okay. I would like you to roll me either a reason science or a reason medicine. No difficulty. I'll take science. Okay. And I would like to burn one momentum. Okay. Well, you, it's difficulty zero, so no matter what you roll, it'll it'll give you uh, success. Oh, I thought you said I thought you said one. Nah. Uh, zero okay. Difficulty. I'll I'll take. I won't. I won't do that. All right, so uh, you are capped, cool. but you do have a floating momentum, which you probably want to spend on a question. Uh, but here's what you learn. You see, uh, according to the tricorder, that you are slightly out of phase with the rest of reality. And by that I mean it's almost like someone took your quantum signature and tweaked it just a little bit. Can I see 
how out of phase I am. You can, and I'll say for free, uh, this will not be your momentum question. Remember that long string of zeros I gave you before? Same thing. Uh -huh. Same thing. Okay. Um, do and I know how I would be able to put us back in phase? That might be too... Yeah, I think that's, that's too to the point. Uh, but I will tell you something else for free. Uh, if you scan everybody else, they show the same variance pattern. Can I determine what's causing the... Do I know the cause of the phase misalignment? I will say that will be your momentum question. And yes, you do in fact realize, thanks to the tricorder, that the warp bubble that is around your ship is out of phase. And by that I mean, uh, were it not for this bubble, uh, you would be conceivably uh, out into normal, quote-unquote, space. I mutter under my breath, Mendoza, Jefferson, I told you to look into this. And then I explain everything to uh, to the captain. That's a nice observation, Mr. Raleigh. You know, my follow-up question is going to be, how do we phase ourselves back? Hmm. Uh, can we... It's possible we... that manually... Uh, manually uh, disrupting the warp drive could do it. Or maybe the transporters. What was your idea, uh, Commander? Uh, it was along the same lines as yours. What if we... Uh, is there a way of adjusting the warp engines to get that uh, minuscule variable back? Well, it's worth then, a shot. And let me ask this too. Then, um, now knowing the information that Riley got with the medical tri uh, tricorder, mm -hmm. can I do that same type of scan but on the ship to see if it is only the four of us that are out of phase, or if it is the entire ship? Okay, uh, I will say that running that scan with the extra information, you realize that. 746 life signs are correct. It is the four of you that are specifically out of phase. Okay. But no hey. colonists. Well, no, the colonists it's are there not... too. I should have qualified. Okay. The colonists are all there as well. And at least it's not a dream. Uh, Captain, I believe Chief Riley is onto something. I don't believe that is, it is the ship um, that is out of phase. I believe it is the four of us. That would line up with what we're seeing. Uh, so I believe Chief Riley is also onto something that we can probably use the transporters, maybe? I, I go to the, um, I go to my console and I start hitting buttons. Okay. And I, I, I start... Hmm. Maybe if I modulate the nano resonating conversion unit, maybe that could do it. All right. He didn't even roll the table. I mean, that gets some momentum, right? Yeah, that gets some momentum. Sure. I mean, I'd give inspiration to D and D for something like that. Yeah, that 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 sounds like a thing. Let's let's give you a point of momentum for that. So you're at cap. Um. So Will you yeah. take it away if I say I was looking at it? Nah, nah. I, I always love it when players <laughs> can rattle off techno babble or medical babble. I, I usually get momentum for it. Right. Um, when anyone asks if you're a god, you say yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, all right. This will take me a few minutes, but I think if we do this at, with the transporters, we'll be able to put ourselves back in phase with the rest of the ship. And I turn to Zarya. Zarya, if you start working on a solution perhaps for us to try to communicate with the other reality, if, as it were, like while Zar Riley's working on the transporter, it would be nice to see if we could send a message back to where we we're supposed to be. Uh, 
Uh oh, did we lose Nick? I was in line muted. Nice. Ah, <laughs> again. <laughs> Every day. Um, that's definitely a good idea. Um, would we want to try to use the t the transporters to? Uh, maybe we could take an object that we have and try to get it back in phase with the rest of the ship, so that we could send a message that way before we use ourselves. I think the only thing out of phase is us. Only us, not well, the ship at all. No, the the scan that I ran uh, seemed to show that it is only us, but it would also be things on our person, possibly. It's maybe one of the tricorders or uh, Chief Riley's uh, phaser. I take the medical tricorder out of, uh, and, and I scan my phaser. Okay. Sure enough, the phaser is indeed out of phase. There we go. That's good thinking, uh, Lieutenant Zarya. That way we don't put ourselves into trouble before anything. I was just going to willy-nilly transport us through time. Well, safety first. Uh, yeah. by, that token, by that token, will our communicators work? One way to find out. That's that's an interesting I take, idea. I take my trans my uh, my communicator, mm -hmm. and I I do the steps to change the phase. Well, I don't know if I'd be even good at this. I don't even know if I would know how to do that. I'm not a communications. Ex well, you could still certainly try it. It's uh, worth a try. Yeah, and. <laughs> Zines, well, I mean, Chief, you are the Chief Engineer, so if any of the four of us, you probably have the closest specializations to be able to do this. So, um, do a good job. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks! Commander, just and... a moment, though. If we beam a communicator back to our reality, it could just be a communicator sitting on a desk, correct? No, it'll see it. I have an idea. What if we load up all the information we can on a pad or a tricorder and take that back through the transporter that could be used to bring the rest of us back? Um, when I, I have a question, GM question. Mm -hmm. When I did the scan mm -hmm. for the crew and the colonists, did they all seem to be exactly where they were supposed to be as if you know, they were at their stations. Correct, yes. Okay. So, oh. Zines, will, Zines will turn to Miller and kind of, like, tap on the console that uh, Zines would normally share with uh, Sarul. Captain, what if we transport that pad over and... I mean, I, I honestly don't wish to harm a fellow Starfleet officer, but drop it on Ensign Sarul's lap or head or console to where it's not going to just show up sitting in your chair and everybody's going to walk past it. What's the course of action that we want her to take though? I mean, we could put it on the pad and and have her and the rest of the crew figure out how to perfect what Chief Riley is doing to get the four of us back. And I'm going to spend some threat here. The of ship begins are. to rock and otherwise move again. And I'm not going to try to replicate it, but imagine the most sinister, evil sounding sort of laughter, malicious laughter that you can. It starts off low, but begins to grow in volume. I pull right, I my phaser and aim at where that sound's coming from. Well, before the realizing sound's that, coming that's from stupid. everywhere. So I kind of sweep around the room and then realize that that was the dumbest thing I could have done. I put my hand on Raleigh's shoulder. <sighs> Commander, it's okay. I don't think a phaser is going to help us at this point. But um, No, it, hel it helps me. Captain, it helps me. I, I think at this point we need to 
we need we need to act boldly here. So, Commander, if you can load all the available information you have onto that tricorder, even your best and wildest guess, give it to me, and I'm going to beam over. Whoa. We're going to just send the captain? Uh, Captain, I will remind you that there are Starfleet protocols, that the captain's not the one that takes these dangerous missions like this. I believe they call it the Archer Rule. That's a great suggestion, number one. Um, file that into Complain If I Survive category. Understood, Captain, but uh, I would volunteer myself as, well... I would, but if you were going to do this, then um, I will complain to you when this works. That sounds appropriate, number one. Frankly, of the, th of the four of us, I'm probably the one that's the most expendable in this situation. The three of you are very specialized in your jobs. If I don't make it back, you're going to need all the expertise you can to make the next possible guess on how to fix this. But Mr. Riley, if you can get the transporter set up, everything you can provide in that tricord to help the normal Akagi personnel bring the rest of you back. That's what we're going to need. Uh, all right, Zarya, I'm going to need your assistance. I need you to control the phase variance while I control the actual transport. Sure. Happy to help. Um, and I'm going to put my hand on, on Miller's shoulder and deadpan to look at him and say, and if this doesn't work, Captain, the plaque will be beautiful in your former office. And I kind of chuckle. You know, if you ever wanted to get command, this is maybe not the best way to do it, but it certainly Cap happened this way in the past. Captain, I'm I'm not a Vulcan. I'm not going to take command in that manner. <laughs> and I kind of chuckle. <laughs> well, number one, and I say this lower in tones, number one, if this doesn't work, I want you immediately to start thinking of the next possible plan you can. Of course, Captain. I know we're out of options here, but I... There's got to be a way to get us back. This, this doesn't feel like a random set of circumstances. Of course, Captain. Um, as is any good commander's main goal, I will make sure I get our people to safety and figure out what is going on. Good. Turn to Raleigh. And Mr. Raleigh, if you're, while you're beaming me away, if you could shave off a few pounds, that would save me some trouble when I get back to Starfleet Medical the next time. I've skipped a few physicals, I have to admit. Hey, that's below the belt. <laughs> uh, no, actually, I, Chief Riley, I believe he's worried about the things that are above the belt. <laughs> I ignore that, and uh, I motion desire to follow me to the transporter room to make the adjustments. So just to speed things up a little bit, I will say that uh, if you all head to the transporter room and you make the modifications, it's a rather simple procedure. Um, but actually, uh, doing the transport task will be a rollable task. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, for this, uh, you're just beaming the captain. So this is going to be a control and engineering, and the ship would assist with sensors engineering normally, but because the ship's out of phase, the ship will not be assisting you. And I'm also going to spend my remaining two threat to make it a difficulty three overall. And apparently okay, the I'd dog like to... disagrees with me. <laughs> Your Sorry. dog is on our um, side. No, he's not. Um, he's an angry dog. Um, I would like Zarya to assist me. Okay, she certainly can. Uh, so I can just focus. She can focus on the temporal part of this. Mm -hmm. I can focus purely on the transport. Okay. Um, and then I'd like to burn three momentum to get two extra dice. All right. And I imagine, Raleigh, you've probably given me that tricorder, right, with all the information? Yes. And as I look at the two of you working, I kind of crack a smile and a joke. You know, guys, this is not the craziest thing I've ever done. I promise. You know what? I believe you. And then I energize. All right, so I need to see a uh, control engineering from you. Uh, Zarya, you will oh! be 
Very nice. Uh, Zarya, yeah. you'll be assisting with a control and science. You there were no doubts in my mind at all. All right, so that's five successes out of the three you needed, so you get two momentum. Yeah, Miller, uh, you know, you're, you, the, the transporter beam sort of fills your vision with blue, and then the next thing you know, you're in sickbay. And you have materialized right next to Lieutenant Commander Jensen's desk. Jensen looks up and says, Sir, I, I just talked to you five minutes ago. You didn't have to beam yourself here. Uh, Mr. Jensen, I would like to socialize, believe me, but I'm under a bit of a time crunch here. I need to get to an out of character. I'm sure there's a qualified person that I would know I would need to go see with this information. Mm-hmm. You, you know who to go to. Okay, I'm going to go to that person, whoever that is. All right. So, long story short, uh, you get to the, the correct person, you show him the data, and you look over it, and we'll say, uh, we'll call him Ensign Thompson, sure. He'll be an NPC. I'll set him up later. Uh, but Ensign Thompson sort of looks at you, sir, and says, Well, Captain, if if I had to, to guess, uh, uh, there was records that when we experienced the subspace turbulence, uh, based on what you're seeing and what we scanned earlier, it seems that uh, for whatever reason, you and the others were knocked out of phase. Uh, but, sir, from what I'm seeing... Uh, time is not passing at the same rate for you as it did for us here. It's it's maybe been two minutes since we had the turbulence. Oh no, that means it's time has probably passed even faster for them where I just left. Okay, we need to get a solution to bring them back immediately, or even a way to send them a message, whatever we can. They're on their own. So, those of you back on the ship, you know, the captain, you know, dematerialized... And then it's just sort of nothing. And that nothing continues to happen. I'd say you maybe wait about 15, 30 minutes when you realize nothing is just going to happen. Um, so, uh, I may have killed our captain on my first day here. Uh. Don't worry, Chief Riley. I will make sure that it is noted in your log or in your record that the captain told you to do it. Cool, 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 cool. And I would but... like all of you, real quick. I would like you to roll me a uh, fitness medicine, please. The difficulty here is a two. Uh... Oh God, I'm really glad I'm not making this roll anymore. <laughs> Can I burn one momentum? Certainly can. Would I necessarily have any applicable focuses for this? I don't Do think so. Do you have composure? No. Well, I do have stress disorders. Let's see. Uh, I would say that uh, psychiatry would apply. Yes. Uh, what... What about, oh, there you go. what about survival? Uh, survival... Sure, why not? Oh. Alright. So, let's see. That's two for Riley, three for Zarya, and one for Zines. So, Riley and Zarya, you guys don't hear this. Zines, though, it's almost like someone's whispering in your ear. And the whisper is... Transport yourself. Transport yourself. You know you want to do it. Transport yourself. Do it, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have we moved back to the bridge, or are we just hanging out in the transporter room? That's your call, but I would say probably you guys are still in the transporter room. Okay. Uh, my head is in my hands, because I'm just terrified that I sent someone to, to their death. Now, now, Chief, you, you can't be thinking like that. We need to keep ourselves on our goal of getting ourselves back. We need to not do anything rash. We, ne we need to not do anything that someone may dare us to do. Or... You mean like transport ourselves? I don't know. 
or yell ya yeet and just jump in the transporter room. Um, we need to yeah, stay on course. Why would you do that? Don't do that. I, I don't know. It was something a <laughs> rather large balding man once told me. Um, you need, we need to stay focused. So keep working the problem. Keep learning. Things. Okay. So, because we don't have, we haven't heard anything from the captain. I, I think my assumption would be that this was. Hmm. So, well, I mean, to, to the time. You, you go ahead. The time is, there is a difference in time that we can see the the variance would i be able to determine that there is a essentially a delay i would say no you're not privy to that information yet but to help you out we do cut back to miller uh at this point uh miller uh the engineering staff has done their best and ensign thompson looks up at you and says sir we tried to send your message the message to transport themselves i they're still not here <laughs> sir should we try again? Oh. All right, Mr. Thompson, bear with me. Can you beam me back? Sir, I don't even know how you beamed yourself out of there in the first place. Okay, I guess continue sending the message. Is there any way you can increase the power of the message? I can, sir, but based on what you've told me, uh, it might not be pleasant for them. Don't forget the magic word. It's please. We all learned it's please. (laughs) I think at this point, I don't know what they're heading into, but the alternative, even if it's uncomfortable, is what they need to do. So let's do it. Yes, sir. He pushes a button. And back in the transporter room, uh, the every single display in the transporter room uh, illuminates, and it shows the same message. It says, transport. Do it now. And then to, to further sort of amp up the horror of this scenario, uh, the doors to sickbay open, or not to sickbay, to the transporter room open, and in comes a barrage of flying paper, and written on the paper in the same thing that was written on the view screen are the words, transport, do it now. Can I spend some momentum and create an advantage here? Sure. I'd like I'd like Zines to recognize the, the way the language is phrased to realize that that might be the language that Miller would use. Sure, I'll take it. Okay, then. Uh, if Zion sees a bunch of papers flying at him, and for, you know, comical sake and um, uh, show, air quotes, sake, mm-hmm. one of the papers either slaps him in the face or gets hooked on one of his antenna. Okay. Um, and he'll read it and see that it's uh, maybe written in a language that was native to... Uh, Miller was from what? Camus 3? Yeah, I'm thinking the tone necessarily, like the way that it's phrased. You're like, oh, that sounds like Miller. He would phrase uh, it this way. Okay. It. How about a long-standing like, uh, inside joke of the fact that I keep... I, I, You and I were joking that I would call you pink skin, even though I haven't. There you go. But Something along those lines. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Zine seeing that will turn around and look at the other two and deadpan shrug. Uh, ya yeet? And then shove both of them on the transporter pad and tell Riley to hit the button. All right, I need to know, because it's important, do either Zarya or does Riley resist this? I think the surprise is just it gonna knock her... In there. I don't I mean. have <laughs> I don't have time to resist, and he's an Andorian, so he's stronger than me, anyways. Alright. So, in that case, I'm just going to say that uh yeah, with your surprise, you managed to get them on the transporter. Uh you push the button or have it pushed remotely, however you'd like to flavor it. And moments later, 
the three of you uh, materialize in sickbay uh, across from Lieutenant Commander Jensen's desk. And then Jensen says, what the hell? Why are people beaming into my sickbay? Uh, hi. Uh, Zines will just kind of look at him and shrug and say, uh, well, Doctor, uh, eventually you'll be the one barging into sick bays and annoying people. Sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, is this a... I, I don't get your joke, sir. Uh, most people don't. And yeah, uh, I would say I, that uh, by this point, uh, Thompson looks at you, Miller, and says, Sir, uh, they're back. They, I don't know why, but they're at the same place you showed up at. They're in sick bay. And I look at Thompson. Very, very good, Thompson. Uh, continue as you were, and then I'll run out and run to sick. And I mean, he's running through the hallways. All right. So uh, you guys are, you know, looking around, trying to gauge what the hell's going on. And moments later, in runs the captain. And I'm, I'm panting, and I look at the three of you. Oh, everyone, everyone looks okay. Oh, I'm just so bad, wide-eyed. I didn't kill you. No, no, you didn't. Um, unfortunately, I still got those pounds I need to lose. And Not you can visibly see like a weight has been lifted off of uh, Riley's shoulders. And then I walk over and kind of slap his shoulder. Don't worry, it was fun. I've never, ha I've never sent anyone to their death. Um, pray that you don't. And I would also not exclaim the next time you see the captain that, thank God I didn't kill you. It might not look good. Yeah, what you guys don't see, and maybe Zarya does, you just see Jensen kind of pull the pad, and Zarya sees that he puts on it. Put Riley into psychiatric care. And I'll go up to Jensen and pat him on the shoulder. I, I'll i take care of that. Thank uh, you, Jensen. Of course, ma'am. And yeah, that's our first session, guys. <laughs> that, that was interesting. Yeah. That, was, that was great fun. Very maniacal. Yeah, I wasn't sure uh, exactly how much horror to throw in there, but uh, I hope it was at least enough that it would have fit with TOS era and hopefully it wasn't too corny. Oh, no, no, I don't think so at all. No, I mean, to do TOS, yeah. it's got to be corny. Yeah, oh, go corny or go home. Mm -hmm. I expect this to be in the Midwest by the end of this campaign. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, oh, God, the bitching I will do about the temperature. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, let me end the stream. Uh, players stick around for a little bit longer, but to any watching on Twitch, YouTube, or listening on iTunes, thank you guys so much. Uh, we will see these guys... Uh, in two weeks from now, because we are on an every other week schedule. Uh, but for now, uh, thank you so much for watching, and bye-bye.